Alrighty, welcome to the PSBS, the Plays Bullshit Podcast. I'm your host, Cote Piss, and by the way, here is... Uranus Double S. Yes, and we're on episode 94. 94. 94. Make sure we get our numbers right. Yeah, I, and I hear the frogs, they sound really cool. I don't know if you can actually hear frogs like in the final recording, but I hear frogs. Frogs. The rain... <laughs> The rainy They're the one the frogs. In that I wouldn't mind touching, but like they carry a bunch of diseases. <laughs> yeah, don't like play. a whole bunch. Yeah, don't you play can with get frogs. Warts. Don't play with frogs. No. But they seem kind of cool. No. No. <laughs> I accidentally stepped on a couple of them, and that was not a pleasant experience. Mm. They're so stupid. They don't like, uh, they're not like aware of their surroundings. And like, I freaking like go out running and ex- like try, actually try to exercise for once, you know? <laughs> and, and I go out running and I just step on frogs. And it's like the worst experience possible. Well, I mean, you never play Frogger. That's the whole point. You're trying to make the frog aware of his surroundings and get to the other side. And Frogger also, like on arcade machines, is pretty dumb too. Mm <laughs> hmm. I like Frogger, but is there like a Frogger on PlayStation? Well, like the, the original one, like on the original PlayStation. Yeah, I never I actually had that game. I think God. that's what they should do. They need to reboot Frogger, Frogger HD. Oh yeah, just like uh, you know, we got Bomberman on the Switch and all that, and to do like uh, like all the arcade, just do like classic. uh, yeah, do like Pac Man, Pac Man uh, Championship uh, XD or whatever. Do something like that with Frogger. Oh, that would be really cool! Like to really totally reinvent it. Yeah, but you know that really requires um something called um work. Work. <laughs> it's like no one cares about Frogger anymore. <laughs> well, I just wanted like the skit. They just basically put Frogger out with like a different skin, though. It's nothing different. So I mean, we got the other arcade games constantly re release like Pac Man and Tetris and. Uh, yeah, but you want the Pac Man like Championship Edition where it mixes it up a little bit. Yeah, well, something like that. I mean, it can be that much effort. I never got um, into the second uh, championship, DX2 or whatever. I never got around to that one yet. Mm. Well, it just kind of came out of nowhere. That... It, it did, yeah. It did kind of come out of nowhere. And then we had like the first one come to... No, the first one was already on PS3, but like we had the first Pac-Man Championship Edition come out. Mm. The first like exclusive to Xbox for like 10 years. <laughs> so... That one was kind of just came out of nowhere too. Like on the blog, we just oh, it's here. Yeah. Well, they had like a short little announcement thing, but yeah. I love those games though. I mean, I mean, if you kind of played one, you played them all. But like, I love Pac-Man Championship Edition. Mm. So good. Mm-hmm. A little easy, but it's fun. It's, uh... it's really accessible. Yep. But um, what graces us this week in the realm of places? Because we do have like a little bit of things to talk about. Do we? A little okay. bit, I hope. Hopefully. Oh uh, well, mm-hmm. maybe we can start with some easy ones. Let's do some release dates. Release dates okay. are always fun. Uh, well, minus one. We'll save one for a little later. Okay. Uh, let's see what we got. Do do do. We got the release date for Wipeout Omega Collection. Yes. I don't need to hear about the... Yes. Uh, about Wipe Out, yeah. Wipeout Omega Edition is coming out um, June 6th. We'll feature all mm-hmm. tracks and ships from Wipeout HD, Wipeout HD Fury, and Wipeout uh, 2048. We'll release uh, on yeah June 6th, North America, June 7th in Europe, and will be uh, $40 US currency. Oh, all right. Run at 1080p on PS4 and dynamic 4K on PS4, targeting 60 frames per second on both systems. So, wait, the 4K? Huh? The 4K output? Yeah, yeah on, on, on PS4 Pro. Pro. Yeah. Okay, so it technically has PS4 Pro support. Yes, yeah, it has PS4 Pro support. and But they are targeting 60 frames per second on uh, both PS4 and uh, PS4 Pro. Goody. I'm really excited about this one. I think this is going to be really fun. Yeah. But uh, hopefully this will encourage a real, like a new one for PS4. Yeah, because that was the um, kind of sides of like, oh, Wipeout's coming out back, but it's just, you know, the other ones. It's a collection. Because that's what we, yeah, so we kind of talked about this a bit when it was first announced. It was weird because like there's been a Wipeout game, like an original Wipeout game for every, you know, PlayStation console. So when they were showing, when they first kind of showed like bits of Wipeout uh at the event thing or whatever, when they were announcing it, I thought, oh, here it is. Here's our, you know, Wipeout PS4. And like, no, it's just a collection of last three on ps4 and i'm like yeah. 
they really couldn't put forth the effort to put out a PS4 original. Like, I mean, it doesn't have to be a big title. I mean, all the Wipeout games have been, like, in the $20 price point, kind of, like, smaller game range, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, the thing about those are those are very good games. The yeah. Wipeout community enjoys them very much. And uh, I'm not sure if there's much you can really do. Of course, there always is something, but you know, uh, it is it is relatively odd too. This late in the generation, do a like wipeout game, but it's just a collection because beforehand we got you know new ones earlier earlier in the generation. Like the one on PS3 was pretty early. In yeah, its and wipeout. Cycle. Yeah, Wipeout 24D was a Vita launch title. It was. So we do just get about a Wipeout game. Was there one on PSP too? Was there, uh, there, there was probably one on PSP because I think that's what they said. There was one. There's a Wipeout game for every uh, PlayStation console. Hmm. So there had to have been one on PSP. I just can't remember what it's called. Yeah. It's kind of like what was the It'll other It would be like, nice to see the graphics and the visuals on it. I'm sure it looked really nice. Yes. So still looking forward to it. Mm hmm. And it'll have this community of players playing online. Yep. Make it social. Social connectivity. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Neat. Um, so, we'll see. Nice says coming in June. Um, also, for release dates, uh, Telltale announced that Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Telltale series, Episode 1, will be available on April 18th. Oh, good. Uh, for those getting it digitally, if you're waiting for the physical disc version... That will be available starting May 2nd. I was actually rather surprised by this release date. I was hoping... I mean, I was always hoping in my mind that at least the first episode would be out before the second movie, I should say. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, the first episode's out. Yeah, this would be, this would be before the second movie. If you're waiting for the disc, though, you're pretty much getting it the week of the movie. Uh, the, and is it that same deal where it comes with it, but then the, the season pass comes on the, the code? Yeah, like you get the disc. The disc is episode one, possibly episode two if it's ready by then, um, and then the rest will be like updated in as they come out. No, but um, well, I'm not sure because Walking Dead season three or Lost Frontier, um, it with the code. It was just a code in the box. Yeah. Well, that's lame. Bulls of it. Yeah. That's a, well, I mean, yeah, because that, that stops you from selling the game, because that means if you sell somebody the disc, then they only get episode one. They don't get the rest through the updates. Yeah, I mean... Uh... It's lame. Okay. All right. Yeah, we just did a little fact check there. Yeah, um, what did you find about The Walking Dead? It, it's indeed it's just the disc that has the first episode loaded in it, and it's just you know you download the rest of them. I think it's no code. Yeah, um, although you don't want to tell tell to hear us say that because then they're gonna think, wait, that's a great idea. If we start putting codes in the boxes, <laughs> then they can't resell it. <laughs> then they can't resell it. You know? Yeah, let's not let's not do that, please, because it defeats the whole purpose of a physical. It's already defeating the whole purpose that you have to update your disc to get the rest of the episodes. Yeah. Like, it really is. Like, what's the point? Like, the whole I thought the whole point of the disc is for people who may not, you know, connect to the internet or, or, or have strong internet or something like that. To where it's like, I don't want to download the episodes. I want them all on a disc. And like, no, well, we'll give you the season pass disc, you know, so you can download the rest of the episodes. Like, what's the point? It's always just strange, like, the day that we do have consoles that require you to be online, it's just... Because the, some a lot of these games, dude, like you're gonna need to like connect to the internet in order to even update these games, to even play them. Sometimes, yeah, I understand that. I understand that, but I feel like the Telltale games could be one of those games where like you really don't need the internet. Like once you buy it, you know, like, once you buy like a disc that would have them all. You know, yeah, there's very few examples where that's even possible. Like the Lego games come out extremely polished whenever they come out. No. <laughs> Dude, when I bought when I bought Lego Star Wars: The Force Awakens, there was like a fucking four gig update for that thing day one. I was like, four gig update for what? I don't think it was for any of the season pass stuff. Must have been something. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't believe that, and 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 yeah, it wasn't for the DLC because the DLC was a separate download. Yeah, and so, the the downloads are downloads. It's not just uh, 
you know, unlocks. Nope. Yeah, like those level packs were like uh, one to two gigs a piece. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. Take a lot of, a lot of space. Got to put on all those audio files. Oh yeah, all those movie can't, files. It can't be those reused assets that are already in the game. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, it's just to defeat the purpose. Cause what was the first game they kind of did that? What was it Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones was weird because when they put out Game of Thrones, it was towards the end, but they still didn't have like the last two episodes. I think it, the disc had like one through four, and you need to update it to get five and six. Yeah, something like that. And that was the first one I like, kind of did that, and then everything after that, they just did the whole like, oh, well, you'll get like episode one and maybe episode two on the disc, and then the rest you download and update. Still don't worry about that new IP yet. Nope, don't know what that's gonna be. Keep on these other it's really taking their time with that one. I'm, I'm actually really excited to see uh, something new, you know, not a licensed product. Yeah. Oh, and also for Guardians oh. Galaxy, uh, you get that plus discount if you pre-order it now, the season pass. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's it's, cool. uh, it's yeah. uh, I think sixteen dollars if you do the place, with the place plus discount. And this is the standard five episodes. Yep, five episodes. So you're kind of getting an episode for free doing it like that. Oh, I think the one that didn't do that was Batman. Oh yeah, the Batman you got a discount on the season? No, there wasn't Did a discount. He... There wasn't a discount on the season pass. Like initially. Initially, yeah, because that, that was the thing I was talking about. Like, because you were like, "Why you didn't buy the season pass?" I'm like, "Well, there's no discount. Like, it was twenty five dollars for the season pass, and it would cost you twenty five dollars to buy each one individually." Yeah, it was stupid. So for this one, you're getting a pretty good discount. You get it for sixteen. So I might get the season pass for this if the discount's still up. Yeah, I'm excited for uh, Tesla Walking Dead. I haven't bothered to really watch anything of it. I just seen pictures. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's like a whole trailer on it. I think there might be a trailer. I'm not sure. Generally, I kind of just tend yeah. to stay away from the walk- from Telltale trailers because yeah. just play the game. Yeah, what's the point? Yeah, um, and not surprisingly, but uh, it is rated T for Teen, so this is um, yes, yeah, one of the yeah rare uh, kind of a rarity. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, aside Minecraft. from Minecraft, I suppose that's E10. Yeah, it's like E or E10. Um, yeah, I mean it's just Telltale kind of stepping away from that M rated. Yes, and it's been it's been a little, I'll have to admit a little exhausting. As as good as it is that we're getting the mature stories, Walking Dead, Wolf Among Us, and uh, Tales of the Borderlands, um, it's it's refreshing to get something in the middle ground. Mm-hmm. So let's face it, not ever. I mean, a lot of them rating doesn't really mean much, but you know, it's still good to get something more in the middle because yeah. uh, I think Tales of need to make something like that for a long time, mm-hmm. and who knows what even their their new IP will even uh, steer towards. Yeah, um, ratings wise, I would hope maybe more in that middle ground too, so they can have that more covered too, or maybe even something E10. I don't know. <laughs> we already got enough blood, gore, and cursing from all their other series like enough. E10. So. Like, I remember when the E10 rating first came out. I was like two two thousand five. Yeah, I think like the first games to get the E10 rating were Legos. like that. I know were like yeah, Lego games and like Sly Cooper games. I, I know we're getting like the E10 rating. I don't think the first one was Lego Star Wars two, but. Might have been. It was yeah, one man. of the first. Yeah. Because one of those things where, like, I remember, like, Ratchet and Clank was coming out. Those first, like, three or so games were at T for Teen. Because those games came out, like, right before the E10 rating. Or kind of, like, around right. the E10 rating starting to come out. So it's one of those things where, like, if they would have gone back, those might have gotten an E10 rating. Because I know, like, all the mm. new ones. Well, the new ones got oh. E10. Like, like all the PS3 on up got, like, E10. Oh, yeah. Ratings. Those were, like, more kid-friendly. I don't know. I think the PS2 ones were rightfully T. Yeah. For a time. I, I those are yeah, yeah, because in the old ones, the, the humor was a bit more crude than it is now in the newer games. Yeah, it was, it, I thought it was more mature. It's different. Yeah. That's why some people either like it or hate it with the new direction that Ratchet and Clank goes in. You know? Yeah, because that was the thing when you play like the first Ratchet and Clank and you play like the remake thing they did. They took out some things. Yeah, the remake and then if you play the Future Series and all that. Hmm. The Future Series games are so good. Yeah, all like, of it's about all the Ratchet and Clank franchises is good. Oh yeah, there's there's a few duds in there, but I mean Secret Agent Clank. You know. Well, that wasn't. Well, to be fair, that's not Insomniac developed. No, it was Re- Ready at Dawn, I think. Was it Ready? I know Ready at Dawn did Size Matters. I don't know if they did Secret Agent Clank. I believe they did, or high no high impact games. Hmm. Was high impact game. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And then we had like PS2 ports of uh, Size Matters. And that was no good. Yeah. You wanted to play that on PSP. Yeah. 
good. But if you haven't played that one at all yet, guys, you need to play uh, Ratchet and Clank Size Matters. That was a good game. Mm-hmm. Now, the only the only uh, Insomniac developed ones that were kind of duds was like All for One. It was kind of like, eh, because it was just like, it was weird, All for One. They it tried like, something different, though, but... Yeah. tried something different, but I don't know. And then um, Full Form Shot was fine. It was just a small kind of whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't a thing. And then, and then I still have never played Into the Nexus. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> because, you know, it came out on that weird PS4... Yeah, intro. after the PS4, like a month after the PS4 came out, they put out Into the Nexus, and I'm like, what are you doing? Well, this is right around that Beyond Two Souls time, though. Yeah, but Beyond Two Souls at least came out in, like, September or October, so I had a month to play it before the PS4 came out, where Into the Nexus came out, like, the same month of the PS4, or, like, uh, the month after the PS4, and I was like, I don't... I'm, I'm, I got my PS4, I'm playing my PS4 games, I don't want to go back and get a PS3 game and then load up my PS3 and play this, you know, and then feel that drive to do that and insomnia keeps putting themselves in that weird spot because they did um they did, they did this went into the next as they put it out on time the ps4 so it was this weird thing and everybody kept saying do a ps4 port do a ps4 port it can't be that hard and the insomniac has to give their whole statement saying no you know porting is a little bit more you know than weeks than than you would think and we don't really have the time and resources to do that we developed this as a ps3 game and we're going to put it as a ps3 game um, and then at that time they were working on sunset overdrive yeah so, and then something similar happened when um, Ratchet and Clank Quest for Booty came out. Um, <laughs> I remember yeah. that one. When that one came out, <laughs> that game came out like, a, like, I think a month, either it was the month before or the month of the trophy update for PS3. Yeah. Or, yeah. And there was no trophies in that game. And everybody kept saying, Insomniac, patch it, patch it, put trophies in it. All these games are getting trophies. Why don't you patch the game and get trophies? And Insomniac's statement was, well, you know, it's a little harder to put in trophies than you would think. <laughs> and, you know, we just oh we developed this without trophies. And, you know, we don't really have the time and the resources to go back and test it and put in trophies and all that. So we're just going to, you know. <laughs> and then people demanded for Tools of Destruction trophies, too, where, like, with the skill points, just, you know, tag the trophies on the skill points. Yeah. Cause that's basically what Naughty Dog did when they updated uh, Uncharted to have trophies. They, just they sure did. Yeah, they, they blatantly medals. just put the skill points. <laughs> Those in-game medals or skill points or whatever, they just convert that into trophies. Resistance 2 launched with trophies. Yes. I think. Yes, it did. Or Resistance 2 launched with trophies. That, no um, one, that very few people got that platinum in. And some was like, yeah. oh, you want trophies, right? Well, we'll give you trophies. You know, oh, Hard. Yeah, give you get 10,000 online kills. Yeah. And guess what? We're going to disable the multiplayer in like five years <laughs> so you got five years to get that trophy <laughs> i could i couldn't it was just <laughs> i at least i think i think i did beat that campaign on superhuman though mm. I, I at least went through that pain yeah and and i did get all the skill points in the original resistance follow me mm. Ooh, i don't think that resistance follow me if that were like a remake or a collection i don't think that aged well Oof. <laughs> It's a good game. I still like it. It's just uh, shooters have far have sure come a long way since then. No, yeah. I can't believe it. Gosh, that game is so. Oh, old. I remember playing Resistance Fallen Man for the first time. Is that first PS3 game? Like, oh my god, this too. And it was like kind of like one of my first like first person shooter experiences too. You know. How? So like where it was kind of like you know aside from playing first person like Ratchet and Clank because I didn't play many FPSs on PS2. Oh, I think you mean like in I remember. But you say you love Halo so much. Well, you haven't been playing Halo before Resistance? Well, I mean, I played, like... I dabbled in, like, some Halo. I mean, Halo 2. And then the original Halo. But, like, I didn't, like, own it. It was not, like, something I could, like, fully play, like, at my house. Then how do you have a Halo nostalgia? I mean, I played a lot of Halo back in the day. Not, like, right at launch, but, like, I played it. Okay. <laughs> I love Halo. But love you just, me some. But, but you said you haven't. You don't. You. You just said you don't play. You didn't get a chance to play a lot, and then you said you played a lot. So. Well, like I didn't play it much because it wasn't in my house. I played it was like a game that you play at like friends' houses. Okay. I didn't have an Xbox. Okay. Well, I guess that's kind of like me with my somewhat nostalgia of like Mario sixty four, where like I never owned it, but like I just played a lot at my friend's house, or my cousin's house. Um, yeah, but I never played the whole game. I never played Mario. Well, I mean, 64. technically, I have with um, Mario sixty four DS. Mm. Um, so yeah, basically well, the same game. Yeah, 
But like Mario sixty four, like I never finished. I never completely played it. Like the whole thing. Oh, I, just, I, like, I like I I fully started that. I totally just yeah, I completely beat it. Yeah, but you had the means to play it though, because you said you had the DS version or whatever. Yeah, I had a um, DS, but like, but there like, were some never... instances where I could play Halo like on PC or like on the original Xbox, but you know, I didn't really start playing it till like two thousand six or like around like when um, Halo three was about to come out in 07. That's when I started really playing like Halo one and Halo two. Mm. And then I played three, and then all the other ones. Let's talk about another um, a bungee game that is uh, soon awaiting. Yeah, we're getting to that. Here. Yes, we're getting to that. Um, yeah, exciting. I still never finished Halo One. <laughs> I'm still on Halo yeah. One out of the Halo collection. You need to be Halo One, so then you can go on to Halo Two, and then you'll really know. So then, man, Bungie knows how to do sequels. So. This is where my faith in Destiny 2 lies in right now with Bungie and yeah. making them sequels because uh, boy, just, uh, they know how to do it. Like if they can James Cameron it with uh, Destiny 2, ooh, you'll probably be yeah. seeing me on Destiny 2. Anyway, you just said Destiny 2 a lot to the point where we can't sidetrack mm-hmm. We're going to have to talk about it now. I mean, there's not much to say. I mean, we just had the official announcement. We got the trailer that didn't even show gameplay, but I mean, it was a cool trailer nonetheless. Was it the same one where the guy's like talking all funny? Yeah, well, Nathan Fillion. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is like an extended version of that. Like he's basically. trying to be funny. He's talking funny. Yeah. Okay. Because, well, no, because I never actually, I didn't like go and watch the Destiny 2 trailer online, but I did see a trailer during The Walking Dead. And I just didn't know if it was the same one or not. Yeah, it was just. I mean, it doesn't show gameplay, which is one of the, you know, gorgeously rendered cutscenes that Bungie's yeah. always for. But look how much yeah. life and personality was in this one, <laughs> one uh, trailer thing. You're, you're, yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> yeah, what a comparison, right? <laughs> I mean, goddamn. Like, I couldn't believe it. Like, I like I said, I didn't see the trailer online. I just kind of like, I was like, whatever. I don't need to see a trailer. Because I, there, I knew there's no gameplay. So I didn't want to watch. I was like, there's yeah, no, no that was the one thing. But like, we're going to get gameplay like at E3. Yeah. But um, so I didn't watch it. But they played during the Walking Dead, so I saw it during Walking Dead. And when it first started, I was like, okay, yeah, you know, Destiny, whatever. You see the guy, big arm or whatever. But then and it's which, like really personality driven. Yeah. He's like, and then we switched to the other guy, and it's, like you said, it's Nathan Fillion doing the voice, and it's just so like, oh look, person- yeah, look at the personality and humor Dude. and like this like voice acting, like really like in this, you know, for Destiny. <laughs> Not like freaking Dinklage phoning it in. Yeah, or just anything, you know, kind of originally, you know, just like, oh, look at this. You know, they're adding this humor, talking about some guy with a, with a G. <laughs> I think what a G yeah, I mean, I would have to say it was pretty jarring, but actually, like, you know, actually got me kind of excited because, you know, with the game having personality, it's going to draw you in a little bit more, I think. Yeah, so it's like, mm-hmm. huh, look at this, like, like, huh. And then uh, I was like, hmm, and then, yeah, but anyway... But yeah, going to the actual like details that they released this week, saying that yeah, Destiny Two was officially confirmed, you know, by Activision. We knew this forever. <laughs> and the yeah, Destiny we knew this game was coming. For, I mean, for a long time, ever since Destiny One, at least. <laughs> yeah, we just needed the confirmation. Confirmation. Conf- confirmation by Bungie. Uh, the game will launch uh, on September eighth this year, and will. Oh be wow! Out. Almost, uh, almost uh, three years to the date of the first one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um. Yeah, it will release on September 8th, and it will release on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So Destiny 2 is coming to PC. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Bungie going back to the PC yep. after a long hiatus. Because <laughs> they didn't bother to bring Halo 3 on PC. Or Reach. Or ODST. Yeah. They kind of had some bad experiences with PC with uh, Halo 2. Mm. But it's okay. it's okay. I had Halo 2 on PC and uh, wasn't the greatest. Mm. But, you know... Destiny 2? Oh, and uh, maybe I should let you go over the other SKUs that they have for the... Like, yeah, just... I'm getting there. <laughs> um, yeah, so Destiny 2. Uh, there will be an open beta for the sequel this summer. Mm-hmm. Very uh, exciting. So that you'll be able to play it. Everybody will be able to play it this summer. Um, if you pre-order it, of course, you get early access to this beta. As always. Uh, Bungie said that they will reveal the first gameplay during a live stream on May 18th. Oh, whoops, not E3. Not E3. Um, I mean, we're obviously, we're obviously, this is going to be at the Sony thing. Sony. Oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, 
I mean, as much as I like it or hate it, uh, we're going to be seeing it. Time I mean, despite how good it's going to be, but it's going to be in, Yeah, time yeah. at Sony's E3 presentation will be devoted to <sighs> Destiny 2. But you don't think this thing is supposed to be intended for that, you know? Yeah, like, because it says right here, the PS4 mm-hmm. version of the game will have time-exclusive content until at least the fall oh, of 2018. Okay, we're, with, we need that like with, little tag yeah, thing. At with, with guess it, what? You know? Guess what? More details to come this summer. Hmm, where is E3 at this summer? <laughs> All right, fine, fine. Just don't devote a half an hour for it. Just get, just do it. Have the Activision lady or whoever just go over, you know, Call of Duty World War Two and Destiny Two and whatever. Just do oh, it. God. Oh man, so much time is gonna be devoted to these two games between Destiny Two and Call of Duty. Uh, oh. But, but yeah, okay. It's weird, right? Because I mean, let's go over how it was last year. Look, I wonder. I'm starting to wonder now, right? If this E3 is even going to be remotely like last year's E3, no. right? I don't know. Nope, nope, that nope. can't happen. It can't. Right? It can. And that's what's, that's what's going to be the problem with this year's E3 is that they can't Ugh. top last year. They can't. They're, like, yeah. They just, like, cause, well, here's the thing. Like last year, the, the reason last year worked so well was because it was just nonstop what announcement thing? of announcement of announcement. Like these are games we never saw at all before that day like we never saw Spider-Man. or games that we conceptualized in our heads or like were rumored for a long time and now we're like yeah. confirmed yeah confirmed like showing it like here's spider-man here's god of war here's you know days gone here's whatever and like you didn't like they didn't really need to explain these games because this was the first time we were seeing them so it was kind of like this is the announcement weird this in that it. sense yeah well like you don't need to explain them because it's like here it is you know like just we'll show you and we'll show you the gameplay and we'll show you whatever um, so they didn't really need to explain it because that that because that's news in itself as that's announced, right? Like that's all you need yeah, to know is that no dates or anything like that. But yeah, but yeah. for this year, it's going to be more reaffirming all this stuff we saw last year and then what's new this year. So it basically now they have to kind of explain it all because now everything's been announced. Like the, literally, the only like first party thing we don't know is Sucker Punch. Yeah. That's, oh, I want to know so bad. Like other than Sucker Punch, we know what everyone is up to. So all, you know, all you, you know it's gonna be the year for, this <laughs> for year, Sucker right? Punch. Um, Please, uh, this E3. If it isn't, then what's going on? <laughs> Is it gonna be a PS5 launch title? Uh, like, are you telling me Sucker Punch is only gonna put out one game a generation now? <laughs> Early in the generation two, where it's not like you know Sucker Punch is a, because Sucker Punch put out three of them on PS2, two on PS3. And then, well, no, wait. No, they didn't put out uh, that uh, Sly Cooper game. Um, two on PS3. And then there's only one on PS4 so far? That's a mess. Um, no, nah, it's got to be gotta be soon. Um, but yeah, so yeah, other than Sucker Punch, we know what everyone's up to. So now it's kind of like Sony has to basically come out and say, okay, you know, they can probably, they, they can probably save the Sucker Punch announcement for last because that would be like the big, like, oh, look, here's something you don't know, you know? Um, but everything else is going to be like, okay, you know what we're working on. So now we have to show it to you again and now kind of explain kind of, you know, what's here, what's new, what we're doing different. When's this coming out? You know, stuff like that. Yeah. So that's the thing that's going to suck about when we have the, um, gaming press, uh, compare, um, this year and last year, that's going to be such a shame, you know? Yeah. Cause that's the thing. Well, we kind of have to look at it through a different lens, you know, we yeah, can't like do, look cause, at it. Cause like I said, everything's been announced now. There's not, they're not, like I said, the only new game. I almost wanted to bet the only like new game like like we've never seen before will be the Sucker Punch game. Everything else they show in that that thing we've seen before, you know. We could maybe have some other third parties show something. Maybe, but like, well, but that could be misleading. Where okay, it's like, well, oh, is it? Well, let me let me because we're not we're not we're not doing our full E3 prediction here, but oh, why um, not? We're, we're, not, we're not there yet. But uh, well, okay, maybe some maybe some like VR stuff. They might show some like small VR stuff we never saw before. But like as far as like big. Triple A game. The only brand new thing is gonna be Sucker Punch. Everything else is gonna be something we've seen already. Yeah, we gotta see Sucker Punch this thing this year. Oh, I'm so excited about that. It's gonna be so cool. So, but um, but yeah, but they're definitely gonna be talking about Destiny Two at this uh, Sony event um, because there's so I'm many thinking different... about that upgraded engine of Sucker Punches, you know, yeah. and then we're then working with a PS4 Pro. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be so good. If it's that jump from Infamous 1 to Infamous 2 with, like, a jump to Infamous Second Son and then whatever this new game is, oh, it's going to be good. I, I Getting excited. 
just regardless if it's infamous or not, which I'm really thinking I, it, it isn't, then I'm excited. I'm really excited. But I would like it to be infamous. But if it's not, then I'm not going to be like torn about it. What about you? Or would you be torn about that if it's not? I infamous? don't. I don't think it's infamous. Yeah, it's not. It's not. I don't think it is. I think we would have. I don't know. I feel like we would have know something by now, like little. Yeah, like something would have been leaked, or like a voice actor returning would have said something, you know, or like a a job LinkedIn thing. It's it's something new. It's Some it's code name. Drake yeah. thing. Like it, mm-hmm. I don't think it's a new infamous. I think it's going to be something different. And in the way Shuhei was talking about it, with like, oh, he played a form of the game. It's not like you know. I mean, you know, obviously you wouldn't say you know a new infamous entry, but you know something. The fact that he was, the way he was talking about it didn't even like something new. Didn't seem like it was uh, infamous. And plus, I would like to see Sucker Punch uh, try out something new, too. Yeah. You know? Maybe it doesn't need to be an open world game. Maybe it could be a, a single player. Uh, um, I would really forward. like that. Can't. Wait, would you? I would really like a not open world game, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, like a narrative driven game, Uncharted. Yeah. Well, not because, like it. Not like it, but you yeah, know what I mean. The, yeah, like more linear story. All, yeah, linear story. That's what I'm talking about. Which I'm trying I don't, to I don't want them area. to go Horizon Zero Dawn and make it like an RPG or anything like that. Yeah, I think there's just this open world thing is just becoming too much right now. Yeah, and then we already got Days Gone. Because they're just, yeah, and the Days Gone's open world. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just too much, kind of, you know, especially when he's all coming around the same time. It's just kind of a lot to shuffle. Yeah, this is a crazy thing. I wonder if like an inter- internal problem at uh, Sony uh, Studios, like about like when they pitch things, right? Because yeah, you know, obviously, me... has to be pitched. I wonder if Sony has like at least some say. If we're like it's another open world game, uh, uh, you know, we gotta cover the bases here. We can't just yeah. have open world game after open world game because at least with Horizon, they found their sweet spot with Horizon. Um, Days Gone is kind of a different situation where it's going to be a very different kind of open world game. And then um, Death Stranding, they've already stated it's open world, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's open world. So it's like... So they already got their, their bases covered on all just, three of those It's just the thing about the open world, like I said, they just, there's, just, there's just so many of them now, and they take up so much time to where it is kind of you discouraging. Can't beat them. You can't beat them all. You can't play them all. And like players get put off because it's like another open world game. Do I have time to invest in this? Like, like for me, like I've been playing games like... Um, yeah. You know, like in 2015, it was just like, oh my god, you had just between Fallout 4, Witcher 3, and Metal Gear Solid 5, it was just too much. Just between mm-hmm. those three games. And then you had other games coming out. You know? It's just um, ever since we got, you know, the likes of Ubisoft games and GTA 5 and Witcher 3 that, you know, it, it just got out of control. It did. That's why, yeah. that's, that's why 2016 kind of refocused a bit more. Where 2016 we saw games yeah. like Uncharted 4, um... Mm-hmm. Titanfall 2, I mean, it's a first person shooter, but still, it's not open world, it's linear, um, well, right, well, Rise of Tomb Raider on PS4, it wasn't, it's not really open world, it's kind of more exploratory open area, but it's not really open world, you know? Well, technically, um, no, um it was 2015. Well, no, technically 2015 because it's Xbox game, but 2016 on uh, PlayStation. Yeah. Um, Just so, like- you know, it was nice playing those, like, string of games, because it was like, oh, yeah, look, I'm, I'm backing away from this open world, you know? And then I mm-hmm. uh, started playing some more games like Horizon, like, oh, this is a big open world, you know, and then trying to get through, you know, getting through and exploring and all that. But then, like, Watch Dogs 2, I picked up because it was cheap, and I started playing it for a couple hours, and I'm like, I can't, I can't put time into this. There's, there's so much here, you know? Because mm-hmm. the big open world is so much. It looks nice, it plays fine, but I'm just not, I, I don't have time to really invest in this, you know, especially all these other games, you know, that I want to play more. You know? Yeah, that little bit I played of uh, Watch Dogs 2 was neat. I actually really liked it. I only played it a tiny bit. Yeah, I just played a little bit. And I'm like, I just don't think I'm ever gonna really have the time to invest in this. And another one was like, oh, the other one, the other big one too, was like Mad Max. You know, Mad Max was just so huge that I just did not have time to put into that because it came out the same time as uh, Metal Gear Solid Five. So, uh, and I got it that fall around that time, and it, like I said, that that fall 2015 was just Mad Max just could not compete with. You know everything else between uh you know Fallout Four and uh, Metal Gear Solid Five and all those other big open world games. It's like Mad Max is a great game. It's just players didn't have enough time. I didn't have enough time to play it then. You know, mm-hmm. like because it's just too much, too much open world. And then recently I've gone back to Mad Max, started playing some more, getting really into it. But again, I had to just put it off the side because it's just so much. And I started playing other games and I have to come back to it. Um, 
Now I'm playing games that are a bit more, a bit more linear. Like I'm playing, you know, Mass Effect and Drama. And Mass Effect Drama does really good too, where like, see, I like that too, where it's not fully open world, but you do have the ability to explore kind of a big area, you know? Like each level is kind of its own, like a little open area, you know? Right. And mm-hmm. that's how, that's how Dragon Age Inquisition did it too. And I really like that one too, where I didn't feel overwhelmed. It was just, okay, drop me in this area. And it's pretty big, but like I feel like I can explore everything in this in like a day or two, you know, like just really get there and then be like, okay, like I can check it off, and then next day load up the next area, go check, go finish everything there, and then onward, you know. It doesn't feel daunting to have it just all at once, you know. We're gonna get our fair share of world games this year with uh, Shadow of War and then uh, Red Dead Two. Yeah, so I'm not gonna play any of those games <laughs> too much. Oh, Shadow of War. <laughs> Um, so excited. But, you know, and then, uh, so I mean, it's just nice to play something like that where it's not open world. And then I, I finally started playing uh, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 plus 2.5 today. Oh, you got that? Yes, I did. How was it so far? You, you downloaded the big patch for it? Yeah, that four gig patch. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, yeah, thank goodness for the Japanese. I got it early and uh, reported everything on the, the forums. <laughs> they basically that, it because, up. <laughs> Yeah, basically, unfortunately. Uh-huh. Yeah, because I put it in last night. It was like a four gig update. I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to play this tonight, am I? <laughs> and then, well, because uh, I had already given you the heads up that you know the game already wasn't you know its yeah. greatest tip top shape. Yeah. With its port, it didn't mind you, it's just a port. But um, actually, ever since that patch, uh, people have been saying it's fine now. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, fine it's from good. what I played. I've only played uh uh because I went straight to King Hearts two because I already played everything else on one point five on oh. PS three. Oh, I cannot wait to go back to the beginning. Yeah. The humble beginning. Well, like I, well, like uh, I said, I already played one one point five, all of one point five. So like I, I'm I'm done. Like I, I don't want to go back to that right now. I might go back to it once we get closer to three or whatever, but um for now I just wanted to, you know, complete the ones I didn't. So I finished all of one point five already on PS three, but I never finished uh two point five on PS three, so that's why I got this so I could finally finish two point five on PS four. And I started Kingdom Hearts two and I'm 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 almost to where I stopped on PS three. Oh okay. Because I didn't play. I guess so, like, I didn't. Have you I, gotten past that beginning? That yes, I've beginning gotten that back. Thing. Yeah, that that beginning. Yeah, it's one of yeah. You know how we talk about like Assassin's Creed's beginning. Yeah. This well, is, it's and not, Assassin's Creed's beginning is kind well, of nothing not, compared to this. Yeah. Well, it's not jarring if you played them all in order. Right. Exactly. Because I played one point five, so like you you watch the whole like three fifty eight over two day uh, movie thing. So like if you watch that, the beginning of Kingdom Hearts two isn't that jarring. You know, or oh, yeah, we played, and back, or, back then we didn't yeah, have back that. Then. Yeah, I'm, like, back I'm then. Really, back like, in I'm, my day, we like, played in 2006. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't get into the series when it first came out on PS2 because I would have been so lost. Oh, yeah. You, you had no idea how I was playing that. I was yeah, like, what? You, you just played Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, right? You didn't play, you, you know, you, you didn't. Oh, play. I did not. I actually not, I am not dabbled in any other really Kingdom Hearts uh, medium. I almost did with the GBA game, but yeah, it was that, that game's, I couldn't find it. That that game's very important to Chain of Memories story wise, um, the GBA version, which got completely remade as a PS2 game, and then that version is on the uh, 1.5 collection. So yeah, so like I'm oh, glad. It's like a game you so want to play. Oh, that's one that yeah, that's probably the one I'm going to be getting. That and Witcher Three for the summer. Yeah, definitely. that's all I need. That's all. That's yeah, the only that two games I really need. Right? That's yeah. going to like last you the whole summer. Which mm-hmm. because but, this this will be the summer I play Witcher. There you go. The summer. This will be the time when I play Witcher. This is this summer. Yeah. Um, oh shoot. Thought about something. I'm gonna put a pin in that. I got something to say. Um. But anyway. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I'm glad I didn't get into it then because you know I would have got lost because like I said I wouldn't have played the Game Boy game and I, and then 358 over two. I don't think I don't think that game that didn't come out till like even after Kingdom Hearts two. I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And then I'd never owned a DS, so I wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to play that anyway. Um, so, yeah, so I'm kind of glad I'm playing it now, where I get them all in order. Yeah. So I'm not getting confused, because like you said, like I said, you you said a lot of people felt that Kingdom Hearts 2's opening is really jarring, and it is, you know, if you just go from 1 to 2, but like, since I played, now I'm playing them in order, I'm getting that in between. So it's kind of uh, making more sense. So, yeah. yeah, I basically just got past that and started playing as... Uh, Sora, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, that's kind of where I stopped for today. Um, I, yeah, I got, first I got, time it was just a very jarring opening. I mean, yeah. it was considered by many t- 
to be one of the worst openings in video game history, but... Oh, yeah, you're uh, three, I counted it. It's, you're three hours in before the title comes up, where it says Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And then, you know, Assassin's Creed 3 is notorious, but that one's <laughs> pretty much nothing when I really think about it, looking back now. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to try to finish 2.5, uh, all the 2.5 games, and then I still got to go get 2.8. Mm. Uh, so I can play the rest of that. And the 2.5 is $50. Yeah. The the, the okay. full the full collection thing that comes with 1.5 and 2.5 is 50. Um, and the other one, 2.8 is 60. Is 60, yeah. Which is really weird. Um, well, not too weird, but I don't know. I hate to be very speculative, speculative this episode, but um, do you think uh, E3 also this year will be the time we hear about Assassin's Creed? Uh, that was always that rumor thing we heard, remember? The um, thing that leaked out saying that they would take the year off and then we would see it at E3, Assassin's Creed Empire? Yeah. So it has to be this year. So, you know, given the, the dot of the movie and then, um, you know, they already talked about, you know, a TV show. I wonder if we're going to get something about the mo- uh, a new game. Oh yeah, like that was always the thing. That was like it was so weird. We heard this like a year mm-hmm. or so ago. This whole like the whole plan got leaked out, like that they would take a year off, you know, just right. let people focus on like the movie or whatever. Or then, other Ubisoft properties. Other Ubisoft properties, and then kind of like reannounce it at E three, and then have it come back like after a year away, like this whole new revamp version of Assassin's Creed. And then uh, when is uh, South Park Project Mudhole coming out? Does it even have a new release date? Well, it's interesting you brought that up. Oh! Um, the Project Mudhole does not have a new release date. Um, <gasps> it just it is in, it's in their new fiscal year, which is uh, between April 1st, 2017 and March 2018. So it's anywhere in that time <sighs> span. Um, and... and okay. Wait, would people have the right to do, uh, cancel their digital pre-orders with well, this? Does no, Sony that, allow it? That's what I'm getting at. Sony is refunding people's uh, pre-orders of the game right now. If you pre-ordered it digitally recently, you're getting a refund. I should have got to get like, the first one and then, like, for free. Yeah, you could, you, could, you could keep your download of Stick of Truth. Oh, dang it. Oh, I knew I should have bought it. I knew there was like one day where I was going to buy it. I think that day came when like, my credit card gets declining for No Man's Sky. I knew it should. Ugh. I mean, I can't like buy it now because I'm gonna know like yeah. it, it won't let me get the refund. Yeah, and that's 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 what kind of sucks too is that Ubisoft hasn't allowed any other way for you to buy Stick of Truth PS4 version. That is ridiculous. It's almost as ridiculous as Activision with uh, Modern Warfare Remastered. Well, the, the thing is, is like, well, that's the yeah. thing though. Like, no matter what, you're getting it for free anyway because it's gonna come with it. Like when you buy it, so it's one of those things where like, you know. What, I, guess, I want it beforehand. I don't want it again. Yeah, but then what's going to end up happening is a lot of people are going to, you know, like let's say they put it in the store right now. Like you can download it now for 20 bucks, get the PS4 version. Yeah. And everybody Maybe starts buying it. Well, wait. So let's say everybody starts buying it for $20 and they play and they get the PS4 version. Fine. But then what happens when they go out and buy the Fracture Butthole when it comes out? Then then there's going to be all these codes all over the internet of people trying to sell their uh, codes for Stick of Truth because they don't need it because like, I already bought it. Well, I don't know. You, know, well, they, you, you can, can always sell your codes at any other means. Just, I always just think of eBay, and eBay doesn't let you sell codes. Yeah, but I mean, but that, there's other means be, to sell. Yeah, I mean, you could always sell your codes for any game, but like this would be like a big thing where like a lot of people are going to be selling their codes because so many people would have already bought it on PS4, and they can't take away the pre-order bonus for people who are still getting it anyway. You know, can't say, oh, we're taking you know the free bonus <laughs> out because it's available in the store. So then now. it's just like a time thing where you have to wait maybe three or four months after release for it. Yeah. So there's some logistics behind it, kind of why they're not selling Stick of Truth now, even though I really want it for PS4. Um, I guess but, you could have. Re- I mean, unless you had sixty dollars on you, but the fact is that you're not getting that sixty dollars back to like your actual wallet. It's like PSN money. Yeah. Um, Which I mean, you would have probably spent it on something else anyways. But at the same time, it's like, eh, yeah, yeah. It's one of things where I just don't want to throw down sixty dollars now just to get one game that I've already. Like played. I wouldn't mind spending sixty dollars, but like, do I really want to spend out sixty dollars right now in the store? Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, we don't have a release date for this game, and it is really weird because, like, this game was supposed to come out in December, and now it's just kind of, like, coming out whenever, you know? I mean, it's kind of similar to another game, uh, was Gran Turismo Sport. Gran Turismo Sport was kind of supposed to come out in November, then it got delayed, and now it's just coming out whenever. And Sony, same situation where Sony was refunding people who pre-ordered it, 
because they yeah, I just think E3 is the time where you know they're going to look at other companies of when they're putting stuff out. So then you know they figure out a place to put it. You know, um, and then on top of that, it could be you know the game's just simply not coming in shape. You know, yeah, not that it's bad. Not that it's bad. It's just you know it needs to be done finished. Yeah, you know? I mean, because that's what happened. Well, Stick of Truth had the same thing where Stick of Truth got delayed a whole year, but that was from different circumstances. This is almost seemingly the same thing, but I know it's different circumstances, but it's almost like the same thing in terms of being delayed. Yeah, because, I mean, Stick of Truth uh, was supposed to come out March 2012 mm. or 2013. Yeah, I think it was supposed mm. to come out March 2013, and it got delayed a whole year. It didn't, it didn't eventually come out until like March 2014, and the reason that was because T- uh, THQ was the original publisher. They went out of business, um, so Ubisoft picked up the game, and Ubisoft, of course, you know wanted to look over it and develop it for another year under their eyes. And then that's what I get put out in uh, a year later, but this is different. This is from the start, a Ubisoft game. And now it's being delayed possibly a year. We, cause we have no idea when this is coming out now, you know, well, I would hope summertime for it. Yes. I would love a summertime release date for this game, but like I said, we haven't had any updates yet. You know, We'll see. Hopefully, a D three they say something. So we'll we gotta have another. We need to have another sit down with them on the couch, oh, yeah. telling us like what what need. happened. You know, this game was supposed to come out six months ago. <laughs> yeah. When you guys were giving the whole presentation for our D three, talking about it for like maybe like twenty minutes. <sighs> oh, these conferences this year, but we're gonna get through them. We're gonna. We always do get through them, despite how long they are. But um. Cool. Speaking of like other updates for things that we haven't gotten, we actually we'll, we'll tie this into the question that we got this week from Sean. Um, any updates on Metal Gear Solid Survive? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I completely <laughs> forgot about this game. Yeah, well, I mean, it had its thing at E3, right? Or not E3? It just had like its announcement thing announcement on YouTube, thing, where yeah. one of the most disliked videos. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we had the TGS thing, which didn't help it much either. Yeah. But ever since then, nothing. Yeah, wasn't that supposed to come out like first quarter 2017 or something? Is it even coming out at all? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we haven't had any updates. And I think it was, I think that's what they said, first quarter 2017. They're like, or maybe summer 2017, something like that. But yeah, there hasn't been any updates. I, I Yeah, like, I actually completely forgot about this game until you mentioned it just now. <laughs> Latest um, Konami uh, for some people. And also, Konami does get a little uh, product placement in the Ghost in the Shell. Mm. Get a little Konami thing. I'm just like, okay, well, Konami probably hasn't gotten any better in that dystopian world, but <laughs> oh boy, oh well, oh well. But um, yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, we, I don't know, man. Because it's Sean brought like... a... because I think there were actually a couple of YouTube videos of it on my um, sub box this week about like where is Metal Gear Survive? <laughs> it might be one of those things where it's like you said, there was just so much dislike to it that they have to kind of like refocus how they want to like present this game, you know now. Yes, I mean, what more could you do? Because no matter what, people are still going to dislike the video. Yeah, well, yeah, because Konami is just screwed. Like, they will never gain anyone's respect ever again, basically. Uh, unless they told... Because, what well, I mean, we already heard about the ramblings of, like... Wasn't it something where... I don't know if it was a leak thing, but wasn't Konami, like, searching for just, like, any talented person to work on Metal Gear? Yeah, they right? wanted... Yeah, they had, like, some <laughs> listing thing where they want... You know, a team to keep, to, you know, keep on the Metal Gear franchise, basically. And um, that, there has been no update on that either. Yeah, so far the only thing we've got is this Metal Gear Survive, which has already been described as this alternate rally non-canon thing, anyway. Um, right. Exactly. But yeah, I mean, Konami just like I don't know what Konami would have to do to get everyone's respect again, because it's one of those things <laughs> where, like, yeah, it's like you said, no matter how they present this game, it no, like you said, everyone's going to dislike it. No matter what. And yeah. it's one of those things where that, that's what they're doing right now. They're just sitting here trying to figure out, okay, how do we get people back on our side and, and like support this game? And, you know, how do we present it? How do we get people, you know, excited for it? And you, like you said, they can't because everyone's just going to dislike it anyway because it's Konami. No one likes Konami right now. The only way they can do it is that somehow Kojima just comes back and says, oh, yeah, Metal Gear Survive. You know, like he's like somehow a producer on this thing again. You know, but oh, no. that's not that won't happen. happen because he already he already disassociated himself yeah, with that. I know that's what I'm saying. That's not going to happen. But that's the only thing that can maybe get the fans back is if Konami comes back and just produces this thing. You know, like like it's like it's behind it, but that's not going to happen. Yeah, you're right. Um, um yeah, just 
I think this is like the most we've ever even talked about Metal Gear uh, Survive anywhere, aside from some people that made YouTube videos about where they're like, where is it? Or what updates has there been? <laughs> and Sean has an appropriate question because I guess ever since he asked that question, they were thinking about it. <laughs> well, they're being really stealthy with this game. Oh, they certainly are. Um, so do you want to talk about something else that's uh, also uh, very disliked? <laughs> what? <laughs> Going in the trend of it. Um, that can actually lead into another question. Uh, sure. Maybe you should go into the, just the new story, I guess. I think you're already kind of knowing what I'm alluding to. Uh, t- uh, can you share with us the PlayStation Plus uh, games for April? Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so let's bring that up real quick, like. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's bring it up. Not too much this month, but let's bring it up. But we're bringing this up. So, yeah, the PlayStation uh, April 2017 games have been announced. Yes. <laughs> um, coming to PS3, we're getting Alien Rage. Also on PS3, we're getting Invisibles, The Lost Kingdom. Um, <laughs> does that even use the camera? Because that's the whole point of Invisibles, uh, that it uses the camera. I don't believe so. It's weird. Yeah. Um, on PS4, we're getting Lovers in the Dangerous Space Time. Whatever that yeah, is. <laughs> on Vita, we're getting 10 Second Ninja X, which is also crossed by with PS4. Um, also on Vita, we're getting uh, Curses and Chaos, which is also crossed by with PS4. Okay. And finally on PS4, we're getting Drawn to Death. It's finally being released um, free on PlayStation Plus. Excellent. Yep. But then we have John here who writes oh, in boy. and asks, uh, why are people being so negative about PS Plus games this month? I, for one, am very excited for Drawn to Death. Have any of you played it? Well, I think uh, I don't know. I don't know if John listened to like other episodes, but like you talked about Drawn to Death maybe like five or six episodes ago. Yeah, you talked about that, um, right? You, you're the only one that's played. I haven't played Drawn to Death. Yeah. So okay. Oh God, I don't know how how I, I'm not. We're not criticizing John here. I'm just saying this is a, a very yeah. frequent topic on this show. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I yeah, I think that's the problem. Um I mean you played Drawn to Death. I mean at least we can answer this, but like yeah, um, let's, yeah, let's talk about Drawn to Death though. Because the, the the plus debate has been done a lot, you know, the whole Yeah, and uh looking at the YouTube video, um the video currently has fifteen thousand dislikes over <laughs> two 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 thousand likes. Um and yeah, reading some of the top comments here is just gold. Um ha ha ha, good one. So where are the actual games this month? <laughs> um PlayStation Plus died since twenty fourteen. This is for the players. Call me no more. Call me no player anymore. Then, please. Oh, <laughs> How much of a Sony shield do you have to be to click like on this free lineup of trash? <laughs> These games are the definition of lame. <laughs> God, the comments on this man ruthless, huh? Yeah, but, it's ruthless. Yeah. Like I said, we, but, we 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 debate enough about the the plus thing, so let's just. Yeah. Let's but just, I like I like reading the, the ridiculous internet hyperbole of the plus games because uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So let's focus on Drawn to Death for a minute. So, God, so Drawn to Death was a game we talked about a lot before about how it just kind of went dark for the longest time. It did. Um, and I have it already on my system loaded. You know, well. Uh, before all this uh, because I was in that limited access thing they just randomly put out you know they put out a code online here here's a code go download it's the limited access version and like I said I was playing it this whole time when it was still supposed to be a free to play game Um, and you know they did the whole thing where like oh any money you spend in it you're going to get back and then then they kind of changed it where like now any money you spend you're going to get back double or times one Mm -hmm. 150%. 150%. So you spent $10, you get $15 back, something like that. Um, and then, like, then they changed it to, like, you're supposed to get it back in in game currency, but, like, then they changed, like, no, you're going to get back in PSN money. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's one of those, right. it was all, like, red flags that didn't sound good. You know, like, they were really backtracking on this game mm-hmm. um, in, Lim- in the Limax version. And then all of a sudden, it just said, no, here's Drawn to Death. We're, it's not going to be free to play no more. It's going to be $20. You know, all, the, all of it's there. Everything you need is there. You can just unlock it as you play, whatever. But now it's a now it's a PlayStation Plus game, so already it is kind of free to play almost. <laughs> yeah. Because, but I mean, no, this is good for a game like this because it needs this, you know, this audience, you know, right away. 
you know, hit this yeah. wide audience. It's just, it's just this like crowd of online people. I just, I don't know if they're like as like accepting or willing to even give this a try. You know. But why? I wonder how it's... Rocket League was able to get away with it at its time, but then like Drawn to Death comes along, and then we got people saying like, "Oh, Drawn to Death, more like bored to death of all these indie games." I'm like, what? It's, <sighs> it's a David Jaffe game. <laughs> I'm like, I guess uh, these people don't know that clearly. Um, like it's, it's a very strange, it's, right? It's strange it's, it's, because people, it's a free plus game and it's like, not like backed by a triple A studio. Yeah, it's be, well, did people already forget Little Big Planet came out last month or the month before? Yeah, we got I, Little Big Planet three. We got Tearaway last month. Oh, yeah, shit, did I even redeem Tearaway? Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, dude, that game is like a bit on discount several times, like on four bucks, eight bucks. Not you know what's bad. cheaper than four and eight bucks? Zero bucks. <laughs> oh my god! I know, I know, I know. I say that a lot too, but like you know, it's just I mean, you need to redeem it. <laughs> I, I may have redeemed it because I'm looking at what was the free games last month, and they had disc jam, disc jam, and I think I remember redeeming that, and I don't see why in hell I would redeem that and not tear away and folded. You know? Yeah. So I, I I must have redeemed it. I just don't remember redeeming it, but I, I'm pretty sure I did. But anyway. Drawn to Death, yeah, I, I kind of talked a little bit before, but yeah, Drawn to Death is really fun. It's, you know, the online multiplayer, you know, death match and team death match and all those kind of modes. But it's just so unique in its art style. And just kind mm-hmm. of the, the execution of it is just really unique. And it is something different. It's fresh. It's a fresh take. Um, it's in third person. So again, you're not even falling into a first person thing where you're like, you know, oh, it's first person, but it looks different. No, but at least you're getting third person on top of the unique kind of art style and everything and just the the, the humor into it because um we actually got an update on this because i bring it brought it up maybe a week or two ago um they said that drawn death will have a platinum trophy and people who are in the limited beta like me the trophy list got updated so it is all still the same trophy list yeah drawn um, death looks really neat so they're updating the trophy list because that's one that I brought up like because mine when you look at the trophy list for mine it says drawn death limited access there's a trophy so i thought i was gonna have some like super rare trophies because it's gonna get like a new trophy list yeah. Um, but no, they said it's, it's being updated. So all the trophies I currently have will carry over to the new list. Um, and then uh, some extra trophies will be added, in, including the Platinum Trophy. And it's a great trophy list if you go look it up, because each trophy is this like really long sentence. And if you read them all in a row, it tells a story. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a shadow of... Uh, what was it? <sighs> Empire of Shadows? Linger, Linger in the Shadows. Ling- Linger in the Shadows, yeah. Where we'll tell like, a little story. Yeah. So it's, it's really fun, and it's sort of, sort of like how they're taking these kind of things and having some real kind of fun with them. Um, so yeah, but but yeah, so, I mean, it's great that this, this is going to be a PlayStation Plus. It's going to um, hit a wider audience, be there, and I don't know, I guess I have to delete mine and then re-download the new Plus version because it'll have everything in it, because I don't know if it would just update or not. I don't know. Uh, I'll look into that. But... But yeah, people should check out Girl on Death. I mean, it's free if you have PlayStation Plus, so it's kind of like, why not yeah. check it out? And it kind of needs that multiplayer. I mean, it's a multiplayer-only game, so it needs that that fan base. It needs the people to keep playing it to give it support. Unlike David Jaffe's last game. Uh, oh, well, um, what was it? <laughs> Twisted Metal. Yeah, Twisted Metal. That got Which no came support. out incredibly. Had no support whatsoever. No support whatsoever. Multiplayer, single player, no one was playing it. Oh, I, I wish I could tell you exactly what episode it was. I got because I gave my big heartfelt rant or story on how I feel about Twisted Metal. Yeah, you did. I know that was uh, that was. You were heartbroken. Heartbroken about Twisted Metal. It's a great game. It's a great game. It's just no one supported it at all. Um, then it came out full time too in twenty. Yeah, it was twenty twelve or twenty eleven. It came out in twenty twelve. It came out the same day as Mass Effect three. And around the time of the Vita. One week after the Vita. One week after the Vita. One week after the Vita, in the same day as Mass Effect Three. Oh, Sony, what were you doing? Just, um, uh, I don't know what it's going to take with these people to please. In terms of the like ratio of these videos, dude. It's, it's so yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I know it's like a bit small uh, thing, but like, look, fifteen thousand dislikes. That's like, man, I don't it's know. like a thermometer with this thing, dude. Like. <laughs> Oh, Ugh, maybe just ridic- maybe you have no. to have the games backed by a huge studio. They want freaking what? What, what game is coming out in April? <laughs> <laughs> they want what, what? No, seriously, what's coming out in April? I don't know. They're probably going like, to Mass Effect Andromeda next month. Yeah, oh, Mass Effect Andromeda for free. Horizon. 
Oh yeah, we want Horizon. We want we Horizon. When June rolls around, just like, oh no, we want the Crash Collection. We want. This is freaking ridiculous. I just or when the Outlast Two comes out. Oh, oh yeah. my! You're gonna have the one person in the comments say that, right? Yeah. Where's Outlast? It's like I didn't pay for the first one. I ain't paying for the second one. Make money. I mean, they make money on the back end. Yeah. They get, I don't mind paying for the second one. I mean, even though it's. I don't remember how much you said the wait, the uh, Outlast Two was. Oh, Outlast Two's uh, forty dollars. Yeah, forty bucks. No, I don't 30. mind paying forty bucks for Outlast. Now you got me questioning it. No, I think it's thirty. It's I think just it's, it's thirty for the digital, and it's forty if you want to get the physical version that comes with all the games. Oh, okay. I see. My bad. <coughs> but thirty but, um, is still a lot more than most people play uh, pay for the first one. Exactly right. Yeah. So, we'll see. What else do we have? But uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. We did the plus games. What else we got? Um. Oh yeah, I mentioned Little Big Planet three was free two months ago. Apparently. Um. Yeah, about two months. Oh, Little Big A game people. Yeah. But uh, if you did redeem Little Big Planet three two months ago, or you currently have Little Big Planet three. Uh, this week, this past week or so, they released a free Mass Effect Andromeda skin pack for Little Big Planet. You get Ryder? Yes. You get your Psych Boy just as Ryder. You get the, uh, I already forget all the little characters' names for Little Big Planet. Oh, God. Wait, you mean like Psych Boy, Psych Girl? Yeah, Psych Boy. Okay, Odd Sock. Yeah. You got you get in seven armor for Psych Boy Psych Girl. You get a drag costume for Big Toggle. Uh, you get the initiative armor costume for Little Toggle. A Wrath costume for Otsuk, and a Pot costume for Swoop. Oh, okay. It looks really cool. I'm looking at the picture right here. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's just this thing that like I feel probably a lot of people may not heard. This feels like a news item that kind of got lost in the shuffle of everything, but it's really neat and it's like this free. It's one of the things you kind of forget. <laughs> They're still putting out costumes and updates and all that for Big Planet Three. Yeah, I mean, they did put out a big patch. They did. They did put out a big patch for the Panther recently. Recently, um, like it, it's it's the same thing with Destiny at this point that I can't even really give an opinion on it and how initially it was because Little Big Planet Three was notorious at least in the beginning of its launch that wasn't really all that great working wise. But I mean, it's a good game. It's just uh, had some troubles playing online. And it was very glitchy and very unpolished. But um. After all these patches, it's like twenty some odd patches, um, I would hope that the game is at least stable. Yeah. But you know, there's always so many little things with a little bit of playing. A little bit of playing is a very complex game, despite how simple it plays. Mm-hmm. You know, I would like to go back to it maybe sometime, and then I'm sure it gained a boost of player since it's a free PlayStation Plus offering. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I mean, I would be intrigued to come back to it maybe sometime in the summer. At least boot it up once or twice. Yeah. In my Kingdom Hearts and Winter, Witcher 3 playing. And hopefully maybe Horizon Zero Dawn. I think those are like the three I want to play. Yeah. That's all I need. That, that would that would be all I need. That's all I, need. I mean, Witcher 3 alone, right? But, yeah. <laughs> but speaking of Witcher 3. Oh, what, what more about The Witcher? It, it, is, it is with Sad Harden that I, have to, that, that, that I just remembered something that I just missed. Uh, oh, you already missed something about Witcher. Uh, what, what, what do you I'm about looking at my calendar thing right now. It is April 2nd. Um, you missed you missed the Gwent. Yep, this week. Uh, oh, yeah, from you. March from March thirty first to April third. Well, I guess I could play it tomorrow if I download it now. I could play a little bit of it tomorrow. Um, yeah, they did an open Gwent beta for PS four this weekend. Uh, you don't need PlayStation Plus or anything. To download it uh, over the weekend. Players can test out aspects of the full game, such as deck creation, tutorials, online competition, and casual matches. Um, so yeah, I, I completely forgot about this. I, I read this this week and I put it in my notes, and it's like I said, tomorrow's the last day, so I might have to I have to download tomorrow and probably play a little bit of it tomorrow. I gotta get some. I gotta get my impressions on this Gwit game, man. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> See how it compares to Gwent and the uh, Witcher Three because they said it is different. They said it will be different. 
Okay. I mean, I was just thinking, like, what? Is this basically just the mini game? Just no, in the game? No, 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 it's its no, no, own separate no. game? It's like no, you don't no, have to no, call no, no, no. It's, it, it's, it's different. Like, there's there's different. There's new rules. There's way more cards. There's, like, animations. There's, like, new animations to go with the cards. So it's not just copy and pasting the mini game from Witcher 3 into a full thing. <laughs> so online play. Their creation, all that, that, could, good stuff. that could also be a game we could play uh, during Comic Con. Some Gwent. Oh yeah, I do have my actual uh, physical Gwent decks. We're gonna need so many games to play during <laughs> waiting in line at Comic Con. It's gonna be ridiculous, dude. You know we're probably gonna be waiting like maybe like more than ten plus hours in all these lines. <laughs> we're gonna need something to play. We can only talk about so much, so we're probably gonna need some Gwent or some whatever board game or something. Uh, I could play Gwen. I could play Uno. We could play. Uh, play. <clears throat> I do have my. I do have those Mass Effect cards against humanity. Cards against humanity expansion pack. But I don't. Have, I got this expansion pack, but I don't have the main game. I have. I need the main game. Oh to, like, my god! The, uh, <coughs> to mix in the uh, Mass Effect cards. Yeah, we're gonna need a lot to play because we're gonna be have to sit down and just, you know, huddle up. And play. I don't know. Like I said, I just got lucky. I was in that Hall H line for like 10 minutes and I got in. Yeah, you... I don't know. I mean, I get here pretty early for some of these and then, you know, we want to be uh, front in some of these panels. Yeah. Well, that, I only only went to the Hall H panel. I didn't go to any other panels, so I don't know what it's like to get into those other panels. And then it wouldn't matter getting in the front because if we want to ask questions, we want to be near the line where it's next to the mic. And the mic is not generally in the front; it's like in the middle. Yeah, it's off to the side or the middle or something. So like the question when the question time arises, you want to be sitting in the middle. Yeah. So it's that weird kind of. Well, in Hall um, H, it's all the way to the left, then the front, and then the smaller ones in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, it's so weird. I just, but yeah. unfortunately, um, you missed Gwent. <laughs> what? <laughs> on PS4. Yeah. Well, like I said, I might download tonight it's rather or play tomorrow, but I'll see. Um. Okay. I mean, there'll probably be another beta. I don't know. Just like, oh, I just wanted to play it, man. Your impressions. Oh. Does it compare to the legacy of Gwent in The Witcher 3? The life of Gwent. Life of a Gwent player. <laughs> but, yeah. What uh, else do we have? I don't know. Do we have anything else? Uh, notes, uh, not notes. I don't know. Are we kind of like out of stance? I mean, it's already been like just, just an hour. We are an hour and 10 minutes in. Yeah, it's goodness. An hour, 10 minutes in. Uh, nothing, nothing too much that I can really think of, at least in the realm of PlayStation. We have some really intriguing Xbox rumors right now, really substantiated right now. Mm. And then stuff with Call of Duty, but I don't even know if that's worth reporting on because that's also not very substantiated. All we know is that it's apparently called Call of Duty World War Two. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm surprised. No time travel confirmed or denied yet. <laughs> that, that too. Was, that was my bet. That was my bet. Uh, a couple episodes back, that there's gonna be time travel in this game. Um, yeah. Mad Cats is closing down. Going yeah, down and then the people are side. like, all like, oh, you ever play a little game called Call of Duty Two? Um. I don't think there's really anything else, at least in the world of PlayStation. We don't have a lot of developments with Nintendo and Xbox, really. Nothing too much with PlayStation. PlayStation. Hmm. PlayStation. PlayStation. Uh, don't really know. Don't really know. <laughs> this is like one of the few times we're like at a at a bit of a standstill. Well, no. I mean, I went through my notes. I was just I was asking you if you had any more questions submitted. No. Oh no! This is this is all the questions that we had, and uh, trying to lead them up into the things that we had uh, this week. All right, went through my notes, questions. Yeah, but if you have any questions for future episodes, you can uh, send us in multiple ways. You can comment directly on the YouTube video. You can message us on YouTube. You can look us up on Twitter at PlayStation BS. Uh, you can send us questions through there. Uh, we also have the Facebook fan page too. You can go check out. Uh, PlayStation Bulletin Podcast, uh, PSBS, all that. You can search that up. Uh, but best way is to just search it up directly on PSN. You can message me at Boys, or you can message uh, Andrew at Double Is, 
send them all your questions and all that. Try to get them here on the show. Yeah. Um, Twitter has been very good recently. Be in some Twitter questions. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Do that. Where's good? You go check out. Yeah, you can check us out. Uh, well, you can't really message us on iTunes, but you can go check us out on iTunes. Subscribe to us and all that because our iTunes is brought to you by Dayspace, which also brings you Living Room Clutter. They talk about rock band game stuff, so they're probably talking a bit about the Mad Cats thing this week. So you can check that out. Um, there. Thanks. Yeah, they have a bevy of things to talk about this week since there's been some things going on in the harmonics realm. Harmonics. Yep. So, yeah. So, I guess uh, that's, that's it. Yeah. Because <laughs> with that, we start a wrap up. So, with that. Yeah, been, the, 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 the good wrap up this week. Good old wrap up. Yeah. So, with that, this has been the PSBS uh, episode 94. I'm your host, Cote PS and Bibles. Because here is. Andrew Arenas, Double Liz. Everyone have a fantastic week. Be safe. Have fun. Play a lot of games. Yeah. Go play your games. Go do this and that. <laughs> Trying to think what came out you of this week. also go to the movies, too. Yeah, you go to the movies. You go check out the movies. You can go play games. Keep playing Mass Effect. Go check out Kingdom Hearts if you haven't. Oh, Get in on that. Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, you'll love that. Trust me, guys. If you're not into the Kingdom Hearts lore, it can be something they can definitely get sucked into. Yeah. You know. So, yeah. And with that, uh, thanks for listening, and hopefully we'll see you guys next week. And click.